perhaps it's an example to all Welsh people now to start uh, thinking outward and uh, moving on, trying to be bigger and better. We're a small nation, and this time we all started to grow up a bit. And uh, certainly, Neath and Swansea is something we've uh, we've all had a, a realization that uh, Neath and Swansea's clubs were far too small, and the, the region in West Glamorgan had to get to uh, together to uh, devise a stronger team to uh, to give us some sort of chance to beat teams like Ulster tonight. There's two grounds, two chief executives, one coach. Any teething problems from your point of view as it all come together? It's come together beautifully. Uh, the unfortunate, and if there's any sort of teething, it's just the un unfortunate uh, timing of the World Cup <laughs> or the uh, timing of the, the regional setup, really. It's just uh, uh, when you're starting something up, there's a uh, the whole lot of skeptics out there, and you just need all your best players, obviously, available. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the World Cup takes precedence as the, the major tournament in, uh, in world rugby. Yeah. Uh, but that's just a little unfortunate, but uh, it just gives us a good opportunity to, to look at some younger players who uh, are going to be future Ospreys. It's difficult to gauge how good we're going to be this year in that the, uh, uh, with uh, all regional teams uh, missing players through World Cup commitments, so uh, actually seeing how good we're going to be or other teams is, is, uh, is, is quite difficult. Uh, we, we, we're very happy, first of all, to be playing at home and we're opening up the Osprey account. Uh, at the Knoll or St Helens is, uh, is is great. You know, it's a big plus for us. Uh, Elsa are, are, are a fine quality team who've done particularly well over the last years. Uh, hopefully, we'll uh, we have a team um, which is uh, of uh, sufficient strength, which is going to test uh, Elsa. And like what uh, we've done at Neath over the last two years, the two sides have got together. Uh, the better players on both sides and the, uh, the coming together has been quite amicable, and uh, you know, players have uh, have gelled very well. You know, this year is the uh, is the uh, First, uh, first season of, uh, of Osprey Rugby, and it's going to get bigger all the way. The Ospreys playing at the Knoll, round one of the U Celtic League. Welcome to Scrum 5 Live. Well, Mike, if this is the dawn of a new age, is it good to work? It has to work out. I think um, you know. I think we're at Welsh Rugby's drinking in the last chance saloon, and I think that uh, you see you heard Jalyn Jones there, very positive words about how they are, you know they want to be bigger than all the bicker and the arguing, and they, they want to make it work. And I think that you know that, that's great from the coaches and the players, and we're going to see that tonight. I, I want to see crowds. That's what I want to see at Welsh Rugby: big atmospheres, big crowds, and that's what I still think there's some healthy scepticism, shall we say, from the supporters, the, the diehards of both of both clubs that need need a side to win. And I think that's what Lynn Jones will realise. He needs to win. And okay. once he gets a winning side going, who knows? Yeah, sure. OK, so it's a little bit of Wales against one of the Irish provinces. Two other games tonight, Wales versus Scotland. The Borders against the new Celtic Warriors. Glasgow against the Cardiff Blues. Leinster versus Munster in the All-Ireland affair, uh, affair. That is tonight. And tomorrow, of course, it's the All Welsh Affair. It's the Flanelli Scarlets against the Newport Gwent Dragons. Now then, out in the open somewhere is Jonathan. Let me ask you the same question, Jonathan. Is this going to work? Well, I hope so. Um, you know, we've got all the best players cut down to five sides. You know, some said four, some said three. Now it's an opportunity for the players to show that we are, we've got enough um, players to, to keep five sides going. The one thing I want uh, to see this year is actually the whole side, the five sides playing with pace. We have we've been off the off the pace at this level, at European Cup, and also at the national level. We kill the ball far too often, and then we just get penalties away. So now leave the opposition have the ball. They will leave us have the ball, and let's build and play through phases. And that's the main thing I hope we'll have, we'll have this year. Now, the last of our team must be the person experienced the most peculiar <laughs> sensations because Stuart, of course, was Swansea through and through. But, uh, Stu, here you are at the Knoll. This would now be home patch. Yeah, more than ever, Ed, I feel part of a bygone era. And it's a very strange feeling indeed to think that where I play in now, this would be my home dressing room. Much more used to being in the visitors' room there. Here, <laughs> people like Lynn Jones coming past there, humour as ever, with a little nudge where he shouldn't have. <laughs> but always in the away dressing room, this is it now. Only three Swansea players in there from last year. Two of them youngsters that won't be too affected. And Gibbsy in the centre, of course, well, he's gone full circle. He's back where he belongs. So limited impact tonight, but it doesn't have to take some getting used to. Never mind what an old Jack has to say. What do the new fans think? Well, 
Well, it doesn't make the difference if it's not Neath anymore, is it? It's a combination of the Ospreys now. So it would have been nice to have Neath all 15, but you can't do that because there's a lot of Swansea per, you know, good players in Swansea. You know, so Scott Gibbs captain, no problem with that. Ex Neath boy, why not? It is a little bit difficult considering the years of rivalry between Neath and Swansea. However, the new, uh, new era, got to get behind the club. Really looking forward to it because we're going to win. Um, but it's very weird coming in and having just to be nice to Swansea supporters. <laughs> Albeit, I don't think it's right that two clubs should have survived on their own. But uh, the fact that Neath had to join with somebody, we, not, not a wealthy enough town to survive on our own, very happy that it's Swansea. Personally, I feel it's good for Welsh rugby. Um, we needed a change because we know the state Welsh rugby has got in, in the last few months, uh, and years in fact, so hopefully a new change will bring a new era and help push Wales back up the ladder. Blackjacks, blackjacks. <laughs> we'll have to find a tune for it. <laughs> the fans of the new franchise now. It is one single franchise but with two chief executives. Here's Stuart with Roger Blythe and Mike Cuddy. Well, I'm tempted to ask who's got the, the biggest office, but I think the occasion demands something a bit less flippant than that. Mike, if I can come to you first. It's the end of a, a long road and a quite historical moment, really. Yeah, it's been very difficult. Uh, time's been against us, but uh, we're here tonight and we're looking forward to uh, an excellent game. And Roger, it's, um, it's been a very successful merger as far as the media have been concerned. Very positive noises coming from the camp. Is that just good PR or, or have you really come together as well as everyone imagines? No, I think we've um, we've been very, very positive in what we're trying to do, Stu. Um, as Mike alluded to there, it, it hasn't been easy. Um, we've had to prioritise. We've prioritised primarily on the playing side. And we're looking forward to getting uh, doing a lot of work in other areas as the season progresses. What are the biggest challenges you face, Mike? Uh, the biggest challenges is uh, making the supporter base come and watch us. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. Time has been against us to get this thing going. But uh, we're hoping over the coming months that uh, things will... Uh, It'll progress very well. And what, what can we expect in terms of crowd? What would please you tonight, Roger? Um, healthy crowd, Sue, tonight. Um, no, uh, it, it's, it's very much into the unknown. We've been pleased with the, um, with the, with the ticket response. Uh, the weather's good, so we're hoping for, a, as I said, a healthy crowd this season. And whatever it is, we hope to building it as the season goes on. Yeah, fingers crossed, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. We didn't know we had them in Wales, but here they are, the Ospreys. I, I think one of the things, Mike, and came through with Mike Curry and Roger Blythe is that we thought this might be the one amalgamation that might be fractious so they wouldn't get on Neath Swansea, but actually they've been quite harmonious. It's gone remarkably well, and all credit to, to Mike Curry and Roger Blythe for, for bringing that together. It's, you, know, you can see it's been very professional the way they've thought this through, and I think Lynn Jones as well, because he was really pushing for regional rugby, has been nothing but positive about it. And uh, no, all credit to them, but it's what happens out here now matters. I think one thing that will help them is a new stadium at Morpha, because that will give them a natural home to play. And if they can just get a bit of momentum going, and Ed, winning, winning is all about We heard some of the supporters saying there they want to see Welsh teams win, and I think they'll, they'll support anything if that's happening. Jonathan is still with us. Jonathan, I mean, putting victories together is so important, but can they, can Neath and Swansea just blend it like that? Well, if, if, they, if they're winning, it's a lot easier, isn't it? We all know, and the winning side will get support. You know, there's a lot of Swansea supporters actually living in Neath, and vice versa. So when they do play, or whatever they play, hopefully the crowds will then follow if they get results. And uh, I think it's, it's imperative that they do win today. You know, it's, it's, it's always been a few sceptics saying, oh, yeah, it's not going to work. If they do perform well today and have a good win, hopefully the next game then... You know, we'll have a lot more people coming in, but it's the quality of rugby. You know, now that we've made the changes, you know, it's not just going to happen. Players have got to work hard now, and the reason we have made these changes is that we have players with Neath and Swansea who are playing on the Saturday, pushing these players for places next year. So if that all happens, you know, hopefully Welsh rugby will get stronger and stronger. Just briefly, Mike, um, are we on for a winning start here? I think so. I think I like the look of the, so, you know, some of the combinations in the in the Ospreys team, and uh, I think it's, it's all there for them. They're playing at home, first game. The Irish side are missing a lot of international, so I'd go for an Ospreys win tonight. OK, Mike's interested in some of the selections, and so is Stuart. Well, with World Cup preparations ongoing, it's fair to say there are a few big guns missing tonight. But there's a cannon in midfield for the Ospreys that can fire as well as anyone on his day. At the age of 32, Scott Gibbs starts this season. Probably going to have to get used to descriptions such as veteran, old war horse, experienced campaigner. You call him what you like, Bill, because this guy is as inspirational as they come. And it's an inspired appointment 
as captain of this new Osprey side, and he'll galvanise them. Sides need triggers, and when he's firing, they don't come any better. He's got a pretty good man against him, though, as Ulster's skipper, Andy Ward, a great back rower. He'll be charged with stopping Gibbsy. Could be some clash. It could indeed. Uh, it is top-heavy, Mike, uh, the Ospreys with Neath players, but, but Scott Gibbs is there. Um, how difficult was he to play against? Uh, very difficult, but uh, it's, it's interesting for, for Scott. I think a new chapter in his career. This is perfect for him, 32 years of age, you know, captain in the, the new regional side. But I think where, where Scott can have a big influence on this team is some of the youngsters, you know, the Neath youngsters around him. James Story playing outside him now is a player with bags of talent. Can Gibbs get the same out of him that he used to get out of Mark Taylor? And I think that if you look further through the team as well, Great buy, I think, for the Ospreys, Luke Tate from Cardiff. You know, bags of talent, very, very good player. Surprised Cardiff let him go. And if he can combine with James Baker and Bonner Evans, you know, all of a sudden, Ed, you've got a, you've got a pack that's really going to challenge. It's good, isn't it? You always feel that Scott Gibbs is one player that needs, you know, new goals, new targets. So he's <laughs> certainly got one tonight. Well, I think he does. I think he's, he's a sort of uh, enigmatic character, isn't he, at the best of times. And giving up international rugby would have left a huge hole for him. But I think this is a new challenge he needed. And if he can make this work, he can finish off his career in a, in a, in a great way. Yeah, I mean, Ulster have um, are missing their, their World Cup stars. Funnily enough, I think the, the Irish team will be affected more by that than, than we will. I mean, they sort of, they've, you know, they've got less provinces, so yeah. having all those players out is going to make a big hole. But they've, they're still no a very David good Humphreys, side. Yeah. No Humphreys, but, you know, Andy Ward, Neil Doak, the scrum half, Paddy Wallace, there's some, still some very good players there, so uh, don't be lulled into a false of security. No, well, we're more or less ready to have a, a, a look in detail at the team. So it is back to Jonathan and, of course, Gareth Charles. Yeah, thanks very much, Ed. We'll have a look at the new look teams. The Ospreys home team made up of Newport and uh, of Neath and Swansea players. Well, that's uh, the fixtures of tonight. So um, <laughs> you've seen already. This this is uh, the Ospreys. The back line, Durston. I think you know he needs to uh, play well this year. He's had an opportunity down in Neath and he's got the contract. Tawiti and Savili. Savili's come from back, very sharp, but it's a centre combination, Sorian Gibbs, that, uh, you know, stands out there. And it means, you know, the, the new partnership of Andy Williams from back and Sean Connor goes, because he'll be pressurised, uh, you know, with Gavin Henson on the bench. Barry Williams is the one who gives uh, the main experience up front with Andrew Millwood alongside him. Luke Tate just joined from Cardiff, and then the two Swansea boys in the back row, Richie Pugh and James Bater. Um, the Ulster back line. The standout, of course, is Ryan Constable, uh, and of course Paddy Wallace and Neil Dork. I think, although Humphreys isn't playing, those two are very, very experienced and have played well on their travels to Wales. Tyron Howe is a good finisher, so the Constable and Paddy Wallace will be the, you know, the, the linchpins in the back line. Andy Ward, the captain. Stewart has already mentioned him. Gary Longwell has been uh, released by the Irish team as well. A uh, very experienced player for them. And Rod Moore, the Australian, he's joined them on a short-term contract because Robbie Kempson and Simon Best are away on international duty. And we do have some Irish support as well. Amongst the black and white The red hand of Ulster on the white shirts of the visitors. They are a very much a no-nonsense team, very direct, led from the front by Andy Ward, a New Zealander, playing up in Ballina Hinch. Yeah, I don't think they'll be too expansive, you know, they're not like... You know, uh, Leinster, maybe in between Leinster and Munster, maybe not as dominant, just a, a, a front as Munster, not as sharp as, uh, as Leinster behind, but a workman-like side, and, um, you know, with Longwell in the side, I, I think they'll try and emphasize a little bit up front with the, with the ball in front of the forwards, and if they get field position and quick ball, maybe then they will exploit the back. But I expect, as I said, uh, the half-backs, especially uh, Paddy Wallace now to turn stand with authority on the game. Scott Gibbs back in black, back where it all started for him many moons ago now. Vastly experienced, 53 caps for Wales. And back as an Osprey captain. In what is a pretty strong looking 
Osprey lineup, even without half a dozen frontline players who are with the Welsh squad at the moment. Barry Williams, not in international reckoning at the moment. There may be four hookers in that 31 man squad, but he is one who will always get about the park view. Greg Davis of the Scottish Rugby Union actually went to school in Grove Park School in Wrexham and played for Wrexham. Just He's now the, uh... deputy headmaster at Tony Blair's old school. In other words, don't get in the way. Thank you. Will you do all the necessary keep people behind the hate and people back? Well, it was a moment that many people thought would never arrive. But it is a historic moment in Welsh rugby. The first regional team to represent Wales in a league match is the Neath Swansea Ospreys. And they face Ulster, who've made the semi-final of the Celtic League. Both years that the competition has been in existence. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, how the spectators react. They'll have to find their feet or find their voice. You know, come on, Blacks or Ospreys or whatever. Elster can have a slight edge up front. But no chance for Neil Doak to get away from the clutches of Nathan Bonner-Evans. And in the end, Scott Young had to step in as temporary scrum half. That's a first touch for Elvis Sevayali. Made his mark with Bath last season with some cracking tries towards the end of the season, which kept them in the Zurich Premiership. And he is a very exciting prospect indeed. I love the extremely sharp there, little chip. But, uh, Scott Young did, uh, did well to, to get across there. If the kick had been a little bit higher, slightly longer, there would have been a good chase on. Well, people left it late in arriving, unfortunately for them, they've left it a little bit too late to see the opening stages of the game. Thank you very much. But the crowds are arriving, that's, okay. that's what they want to see. That's a lovely ball from James Bater. Paul James crashes into Scott Young. Back it comes, Sunith Connor. Good pass out to James Story. One handed, tries to slip the ball back inside, and Connor comes on the loop, steps for the line. Can't quite get his pass in to Richie Pugh, who just fumbled it over the try line. Oh, that would have been a great opening score for the Ospreys. Neil Doak, with a clearance kick in the end, relieves the pressure. A quick ball, and Richie Pugh almost got his name on the score sheet. Yeah, not sure if he should have taken this. Very difficult to see. This is the end of the movement. Hits the floor, doesn't panic. Very difficult pass, but one that uh, young Pew again was looking at and think he should have taken. But very, very good play there. You know, first of all by the forwards, and then story just cut through. Roger Wilson in his first season for us does trying to relieve the pressure at the base of that scrum. But again, the kick was a little bit hurried and infield and it gives the Ospreys the attacking opportunity. Connor though isolated, not a single man outside him. When he had to take that tackle, Gibbs straight running, lovely pass as well to Dave Tuetti. Tuetti for the try line, and the first try by the regions comes to the Ospreys and comes to Dave Tuetti. But it's the old head, Scott Gibbs, back at the null, who sets it up. Well, this is all about the pass. Watch this pass. Runs at the second row, gets on the outside shoulder. Number seven, Andy Ward, is sucked in. He went for the wrong man, Andy Ward, because he thought that Scott Gibbs was getting on the outside of the second row. And now it's been converted, so it's 7-0. Sean O'Connor. But that was a lovely play by Scott Gibbs. Run at the second row, took the outside, the outside swerve, sucked in Andy Ward. And it's a good angle. Watch this now. There we are, just great. A good play by Tweety. It's Neil Best, oh, not Andy Ward, sorry, we're just sucking Neil Best. A 
Gibbs. Stuart Davis is mentioning earlier, it could be a good contest between Andy Ward and Scott Gibbs, but it was left to Neil Best. There was only one winner, and at that time was Scott Gibbs. Two open sides in the Ulster back row. It was nice to see, you know, people from different clubs yeah, like understanding each other. And a lovely short ball. You know, he knew what he was trying to do. Just get on the outside of the second row, suck the outside defender in, and to wheat he came on a very good angle. That's Neil Best grappling for it, trying to make up for that defensive lapse, which led to their first try. But driven backwards, and that momentum gives the put in to the Ospreys. Keep it up, keep it up. Okay, guys. Remember, shoulders above heads, please. Grouch and hold. There's the captain, Andy Ward. Fill it in, please, come on. Get on! Hold the way. Andy Williams. Connor. Good pass to Savali from story again as Savali cuts back inside looked to have cunning and beat but Shane Stewart crashed him down still the ball is there for Sean Connor sensibly turns away from the touchline Gibbs story but turnover ball for Austin now can they use it this time Cunningham is up from fullback that's Shane Stewart who put that important tackle in gets his chance in attack First action there is down. Uh, Your first step action will fail to stay down. on their feet. And they give the penalty away. I think they should go for goal here. Skipper, you first know, action was down. I want it. The kickable penalty. Neil Best again has not the greatest stars. Got sucked in for the try. And now he's given a penalty away. Sure, he'll go for goal. Very good back play. Watch it. There's the dummy run there. Then the miss pass, and then the second miss pass. It just the two dummy runners just held the inside defence, so they couldn't drift. And I thought I really should have had a little look inside, maybe, or just taken had a crack on the outside. A very, very good play. Unfortunately, this part was rushed. A very good start by Neath and Swansea Ospreys. Connor struck it well, but drifted it across the face. So remains at seven points to nil. All these mergers, I'm getting the players wrong as well. It's not Havili, it's Sevail, Sevail, isn't it? To Eddie, to Adrian Durston. Nice to pin the right. left foot as usual. Tackle is slightly high, but play on says the referee. Ward with the pickup. Okay. Support comes from Rod Moore, the Australian tight head. Doak. Best standing off. Tackle rock! Rock! Plenty of support there for him that time as well. Wallace. Chipu, the one well is in there in support of his outside half. So too is Neil Best. He's the one offering it to the other second row, Rowan Frost. Andy Ward drives them on a stage further. Still movement, so they can still continue. Yeah, they've got no one on the left hand side of it now. Four to three. But they continue. Trundling up the middle. Now then, it could be a possible five on three. Neath haven't got the numbers across there. But it's running out of space, they're cramping it. Cunningham from fullback, big hit on the number eight, Roger Wilson, by Dave Tuetti, who'd come off his wing. And it proved to be a very effective tackle. Yeah, good spotting by uh, Dave Tuetti, but Gibbs went round there to, to even the numbers up. But it was very slow play, and that's what you want Neil Dork to have, you know, a word of the forwards. And a sign coming from the full back to say, look, you know, we want it. Now we've got an overlap on the left. Now we want it. The time the ball came out, it was far too slow. There's the academy director on the phone, Garin Jenkins. Just alongside us in the commentary position. There's Keith Hollyfield as well, being for Neath. 
uh, on the wing and centre full back when I was down here. So he's helping him out of the backs for the academy. And the crowd has turned out to be a fairly decent one in the end. An hour and a half before kickoff, and the place is pretty deserted. That's good pressure from the Ulster scrum. But before it was knocked on, the two front rows have popped up, so Neath can have another crack at it. Cut and hold. Engage. Straight down. Three. It's Rod Straight Moore, down. who is penalised for taking the scrum down. It'd be interesting to see what Eddie says about that, because, you know, the scrum was very strong the previously, and, uh, you know, it did turn Neath, and all of a sudden he penalises the, the Ulster front row. Yeah, Neath rather fortunate to get a second shot at it, and then... Ulster, I feel a bit aggrieved to have given the penalty away. Lynn Jones, as demonstrative as ever. It's Luke Tate to the line-out ball. Bonner Evans in midfield, but waiting for him was his opposite number, Roger Wilson. Andy Williams does well not to pass his troubles on. Tuetti to Gibbs. Chipped over the top. Boss covering his dog who can't gather. Scott Young can't either. And Gibbs pounces on it. Good following up from the Osprey skipper. It's a change of direction from Story and Andy Newman. If he'd have kept on going, the overlap was there. It might yet be no knocked on by Adrian Durston. But unfortunate for James Story. He saw the possibilities. Andy Newman didn't and turned back inside. And the chance was gone. Yeah, the opportunity to... Um to spread to the right. As Scott Gibbs, little chip, Dork, first makes a mess of it, and then Scott Young gives it because, and there was an opportunity on the right hand side. Well, the scrums are very untidy in the opening stages. Middle one and Paul James. Was the hair bear bunch on the, on the World Cup duties, but Adam Jones is on the bench tonight because of an injury. Oh, an interception by Ryan Constable. The number eight, Roger Wilson, is there as well. Young, there's a huge overlap going left. Oh, lucky bounce into the hands of Frost, which means it's still on. Good turn of pace in the second row. Support from Stewart. Stewart for the corner, and okay. Shane Stewart gets over. Superb finishing by Ulster. What a breakaway try that was. They really stepped on the gas, none more so than the Rowan Frost, the second row. And that is a 70-yard breakaway, resulting in a try for Shane Stewart. Yeah, not a great decision there by uh, Andy Williams, you know. Threw it blind, and all of a sudden they're under pressure. Watch his bones. They don't panic. Second row, hands through the tackle, and there is Shane Stewart. I don't know what he does here. Watch this. A bit of twirl and a bit of a bit of a dying osprey, I think it was maybe. This is Paddy Wallace, the outside half. David Humphreys, of course, on duty with Ireland. They play up in Merrifield tomorrow. Stabbed at it, and it was effortless, but very, very effective. Superb conversion from Paddy Wallace, and it's all square. Here's the scrum. You know, bad pass, first of all, Bonner Evans, then Andy Woods with a shuffle the bad ball on. Bonner Evans has just got to pick the ball up there as number eight and just head down, get over the advantage line and try and make bad ball into good goal. ball. There's the try scorer. There's the converter. Favouring him that time. And I think that touched... Uh, He's very over? lucky there. I'd like to see that again because I think Durston might have touched that as the ball went over the touchline, whether it was in touch or not. Oh, 
Danny Longwell at the front. And then he puts them off, but James Bater at the tail is secure for Neath. Try and get a drive on. Connor, good dummy, and he's through the gap. That's a great first by Connor. A story outside him, Pew inside. Richie Pew is very quick as an open side. Now then, can they develop this? Bonner Evans tries to shimmy inside his man. Alistair, we're offside. Neath have an advantage at the moment. Tuetti heads for the gap. Connor again follows well. Andy Williams to Barry Williams. Crashes into his man and offloads. Luke Tate there as well. Into the Ulster 22. Williams. Straight out the story. The show and goal from Story, but it's Ward's tackle that stopped him. He was halfway through, but that was an important tackle from the Ulster captain, Andy Ward. And again, Neath trying to play with pace. But uh, that time, the defence good enough. Ospreys, not Neath. Ospreys, Gareth, right? Thank you, gentlemen. First correction. Here you are. I'm enjoying the angles of support which the Ospreys are running. They're all coming on... You know, short balls attacking the space off the short, short shoulder ball, and uh, you know the O'Connor certainly working well with Gibbs. Oh, lovely play by Paddy Wallace as well. Okay. And good support play. Cunningham is up there. Not in the side. Advantage. I thought Ryan Constable went the wrong way there, but now they've got numbers. They must score. Stewart, McCormack, Ward, McCormack are in the way of his winger. Scott Young. Now he has it. Has that given the Neath defence time to get back? Doak, the long pass to Wallace. Lovely pass to Tyrone Howe. Howe brushes past the fast tackle. Gets the pass into Stewart. And Ronan McCormack was absolutely determined to get his hands on the ball. And he's the one who crashes over for Ulster's second try. Well, maybe it was all going so well for the Ospreys. And in the first ten minutes, this is a stroll in a park. This is what you come up against at this level of rugby. Ulster were on the ropes and they've bounced back with two excellent tries. It's okay going forward, boys, that's what he's telling them. You've got to defend as well because the defensive organisation was very poor there by uh, the Ospreys. It's good support play. McCormack scores. 45 left. Cormac in his first season in the big time with Ulster. And obviously, really looking to be part of things. Paddy Wallace supplies the two points once more. And it's no less than he deserved because he's the one who set the try up in the first place. And Ulster now lead by 14 points to seven. And this is where they came, look, didn't, didn't number up in defence. Two-man overlap, Paddy Wallace, and I thought comes went the wrong way here, look. Winger outside, gives it inside, and then from that ruck, they go the right way and eventually get over. Well, a very quick change has been made by Lynn Jones. Adam Jones was released by Steve Hansen. And there he is, 22, just following up that kick. So he'll have an hour's play, or just over an hour's play. Release Late replacement, the and Kai Griffiths, the replacement for the no hamstring. No no finds himself in action towards the end of the first quarter. Sean Connor on the angle, and that's a lovely kick. Maybe that's what the Ospreys need at this stage. Just foot on the ball, and just work your way down. Yeah, lovely kick. No real option there. James Story and Scott Gibbs and kicking centre, so um, a difficult kick. Well executed. Adam Jones ahead of James Bater. Bater has come down the line to try and challenge Gary Longwell. And he did so as well. Or oh, Andy Williams responding well. Barry Williams has come after Connor. Telegraph pass. Absolutely offside. telegraphed with Dave Tuetti waiting there. But else they were offside anyway. It's 
certainly been involved, hasn't he? The best. 13, skipper. 13. Yeah, constable number 13 was offside. There's the break. Expecting to offload. Took the direct route. Got up the advantage line. Good clear out. Just a little bit slow there, buddy. You know, for the scrum out because only was caught, but they were clearly offside. Easiest of penalties for Sean Connor. And that takes the Ospreys up into double figures and back within a try. So, a lively opening quarter. Three tries already scored. Conditions. Pretty much perfect this evening. For running rugby. Once again, the basics got right by Sean Corner. Why can you come, please? There's a website address. Go half back. For all your thoughts okay, on this wait. opening weekend of Club Rugby in Wales. Tackle, the ball. Wilson ball managed wait. to get it back. Andy Ward trying to get behind the tackle to get the pass. It may look forward to Matt Sexton. And Wilson is still down injured in the middle of the field. And Scott Young takes it on. Doak. Interception for Luke Tate. Interception back for Matt Sexton. Neil Best again in the action. But the number of interceptions we had shows that both teams are looking to keep the ball alive and then die with it. Sometimes a pass just a little bit forced. Wallace and a little grubber kick through. Dearston misses it though. A little toe poke by Tyrone Howe, but it went forward from Paddy Wallace's fingertips. Dearson has got a lot of ability, but I'm not too sure if this is his best position. I think that you need pace at full back, and I just think that um, sometimes his skills are far better utilised, maybe closer to the you know, to the play. That's Roger Wilson, number eight, who's injured. And Neil McMillan, who's a very useful flanker. Ready to come on. Well, the spectators have certainly filled in. I think they were, you know, interested in how this partnership would work. As we mentioned, if it's successful on the park, I'm sure they will be successful off it as well. This possession, not much in it. I think I'll still come back into it. Maybe more possession, you know, in, the, in their own, on their half, with the two opportunities that they have had. You know, they've done really well. It's the last try. Yeah. Good break. There's the missed tackle. Sevaili. The offload. Stewart's there again. But offloads to Macoma. Neil Doak to Rowan Frost. Wallace. Dummies caught that time, followed the ball carrier. The ball spilled forward in the tack. Well, well, first defence, guys, once you're on the ground, please let it go. Once you're on the ground. I am enjoying uh, Paddy Wallace's play. You know, he's taking the ball up to the defensive That's line the and uh, he is asking questions. And what happens is, you know, he's, they can't drift, the defence can't drift. He's just standing in the... Connor Evans crosses the gain line that time. And the gap appears for Andy Williams. Williams over halfway on the 10 metre line. He's got it all on his own. A cross comes the defence. Cunningham with a tackle. And Cunningham regathers as well. And sets off on a run himself. Cunningham now looks for support. And gets it from Ward. Ward with a huge run in. Andy Ward into the 22. He'll score. And he will not be caught. What a superb breakout by Ulster and by Andy Ward. 
that Andy Williams may not have had the pace to make it, but Andy Ward had pace to burn. Great score from the Ulster captain. One question, it's a very, very good try, but did Bryn Cunningham, here he goes, watch him, makes the tackle, goes to ground, does he get off the floor? Does he get off the floor first? Yeah. That's the only question I have. He's handling the ball while he's on the ground, but from there on, that is a, a technicality, but very, very good play. Good pace by Ward, and again, you can attack as much as you can. You've got to switch on defensively. Paddy Wallace secure with his kicking again. And the Swansea Ospreys have been punished once again. A promising attack ends in seven points against them. What do you think, Anna? I think this is a penalty. Have a look for his right knee. I think that may be the one that tells you. His right knee is on the ground. I think that's a penalty. I don't know. It's uh, amazing to see what the, the boys in studio think of that. But after that, it was very, very good play. And I, as, I, as I keep on saying, once you attack, you, you can't switch off. You've got to attack, you know, and get up there and get the defensive line. Cunningham, happy to get the ball off the park. And the crowd, stunned rather. I think we can, well, you're asking what the boys are going to say, but Jonathan, I think we can hear now from the box. Mike, what did you make of that one? Well, technically, I think you're right, but John, I've been a bit picky. I mean, that was a great try, and it happened so quickly. Uh, but you've got to give this sort of advantage. Was to it a penalty, Ollie? Yes, yes or no? I said, I don't want any, don't want any other story. No, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, question, it wasn't a penalty. You've got to award attacking <laughs> yeah. counter attacking. If you were playing for Neath, you. <laughs> story goes for the break and stands on his feet. <laughs> Williams to Connor. And as the pace of this game continues, Paul James tries to second up. Barry Williams. Makes it available. Connor fence up quickly, so puts in the chip kick. Scott Young read it well. He's read that very well, hasn't he? Just drops a couple of yards further back. Expecting the kick. That one is infield and gives Durston the chance. High and handsome. Yep, he comes after it. Big Gary Longwell is there, but can't catch it. Offside by all the crowd as Rod Moore picks it out. And Mr. Davis eventually agrees. Come off him, straight had, down. Had to be offside. John, you're offside. I, you know, I do agree. You know, it was a fantastic try. But to the letter of the law, I'm sure we'll have some uh, emails on Sunday. I, I, rules is rules, as they say. I, I, I thought it was a fantastic try. And again, like Mike, I would have given it. But it is, you know, they've played exceptionally well, the Ospreys, but they seem to lack, you know, the, the, the match fitness to get up into positions and, 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 you know, keep switched on. They've lost, they were in great positions for really all of the tries, and they've been long distance tries. The Neath Swansea Osprey reply since then has been a penalty by Sean Connor, and he won't add to that because he's. Put it wide to the left hand post. And if there is one question mark, you know, over you know Connor's game, it's it's his kicking, isn't it? And, and in this day and age, you've got to have a kicker, you know, with an 80% uh, you know, success rate. Well, we've heard Mike Hall's view on it. Stuart, what about uh, you? What's your take on this one? Yeah, I've only seen it live, Gareth. It's happened in front of me here, and as much as it hurts, I've got to agree with Jonathan. I don't think he completed the tackle before going for the steal. And uh, Neath could have come away with a penalty. Hey, don't worry, Stu. I didn't think you were keeping up your play. It must have happened in the centre, so don't worry. Uh, even when I try to be nice to you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Stu. Uh, Stuart was down there at ground level. But it'll certainly be a talking point. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's something on that on the old Scrum 5 website or even on the Scrum 5 programme, which will be with you at 5.30 on Sunday evening. Wilson just about managed to squeeze it back to Neil Doak. 
Best looking for some forwards. It's McCormack who is waiting for the pass and allowed to chase Stokes kick. The Eston took his eye off the ball, saw Wallace and McCormack bearing down on him. I the old schoolboy era from Adrian Durston. I think uh, Gavin Henson might be warming up soon because he doesn't really uh, play particularly well today. We know he's a very talented player. He should have caught the ball first. He was off, wasn't he? So Wallace coming down on him. He's obviously taking a, a bang to the head to the side of the face as well. Up, yeah, but we all know what uh, what Durston can do. He's a very talented kid, and uh, sometimes things don't go go for you. Wallace, plenty of runners inside to choose from. Missed them all in the end. Story, and it's a little bit too loose. As maybe the dew starts coming on the ground, people beginning to slip and slide away, as is the ball from their grasp. Connor, and the pass into Barry Williams. Williams does well. Looks back inside as Tyron Howe How gets the tackle in. Andy Williams spots half a gap ahead of him. Gibbs has to play scrum half that time. Tuetti, Wilson, with the tackle. Ball is out! The ball is out! Anybody's ball, the referee clearly stepping up, and Scott Gibbs had to just pick it up and wait for the hit. But he's done it successfully because he's kept hold of that possession for the Ospreys. Durston straight at Cunningham. But in the end, Elster fringing round the side of the previous mall. Well, I thought you said the ball was out. Touch judge call. Touch judge call from behind my back. Touch judge called it that he was offside, so good communication call. from the officials. But you can, if you take a shot at the, the Ospreys there, look, they look slightly tired, and it doesn't matter how much training you do, you have to get match fit. And this is a problem that, uh, you know, Wales have got to overcome when they play in the World Cup. the field looks as though he wants to come back on it's Mike James uh, in between uh, Millwood and Lynn Jones behind yeah. and against the throw taken by Wilson the lobbed pass straight out to Shane Stewart back on say the crowd play on says the referee Connor Evans back on halfway down and up in one movement turned by Andy Ward Got it back on the correct side, did Bonner Evans. Sayali takes it out of the air. Story back to Connor. Gibbs straight running. Gibbs still going. It's so tough to bring down. Connor knew he had an advantage. Put the kick in. Speculatively, knowing that they could always come back for a penalty. Scott Gibbs trying, as always, to lead by example. Yeah, it was a little, a little bit lateral, wasn't it? But uh, Gibbs, he just decided, got to get over the advantage line, get the force a target, and Millward comes back on. So that's a quarter of an hour for Adam Jones, to start with. Having been create, very creative in the first five minutes, nothing much has happened after that, and... Uh, it's very difficult to see where they are going to, you know, break this out to the defence though. He's failed with two attempts at goal. Sean Connor. That one looks okay. Indeed it is. Tons, the Ospreys get their first points in a while and just hang on in there. 13 uh, points to 21. He needed that, didn't he? He needed that, he'd missed a couple. A 
six minutes of the first half remaining. Press a bit of stoppage time. Dave Tuetti has tried, but the Ospreys are new. Back in the third minute. Since then, they've had to rely on the boot of Sean Connor. That's what they do that time as well. And that is a great strike. I do think that, you know, this is the is the kick. Lovely look, strike. Textbook stuff. He left the field of play there. He caught the ball in the air. Wasn't it? I'm getting too technical tonight, don't I? In fact, I don't even know myself what I'm talking about. No advantage. Not uh, there's nowhere near straight. If you want guys, I'll uh, assume it's scrum. Scrum infield. Oh, no, 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 this guys, is a good attacking opportunity. Let's do another and hold. You know, set play. Get the defensive, the blind side winger in. Uh, they, they, they have no. looked very dangerous no, from set piece. Uh, Dave break Tretti up. has come Stand off up. the far wing. I want you down He's earlier, between please. the two centres. Keep down your knot. Engage. There it is on the Get left hand side of your screen. To Etty, the one just <laughs> dog no legging, as it were. Oh, no crooked feed, though. Oh, and I think that's that's what come from the here. pressure that the that the Nathan Swans Ospreys are under. Yeah, Hulster are Jack, looking pretty right solid back. in that scrum. Wallace drills it downfield, and that's a well measured kick. That's a lovely kick, that is. As I said, you know, I was very impressed with Wallace. You know, and I saw him here last season. He's a very capable understudy to uh, David Humphreys. In fact, you know, when, when Humphreys plays, he tends to play full back. Yeah. yeah. He's a very competent footballer indeed, Paddy Wallace. Half a dozen Ireland A caps. Face to one, sail. Down to the front comes Richie Pugh. But it's over his head. And a free ball for Rowan Frost. And a free attack for Ulster. Constable. Oh, weak tackling in midfield. Stewart just overran it for once. He's been supporting well. He's been supporting the ball runner very well. But it wasn't knocked on. It was Young as an emergency scrum half. Wallace looked for Longwell inside him. Tyrone Howe came off his wing just to make sure the possession was held on to. It's McCormack, picks it up, trundles forward, gets us to going forward again. Now tries to be scrum half again, and the referee says eventually there's a number of offside decisions he could have given, but it's the one against James Story. That you've got to be onside. Once there's a rock, you can't stay offside and then go for ball. You've got to get onside. Don't do it again, please. Right, he certainly knows where he stands now, doesn't he? Coming from an offside position, didn't retreat Bender the last foot. There he is, look, clearly offside. You've got to get behind the back foot. He should know the, the rules of the game. He said the ball was out, but you come in from an offside position. Clock ticks down towards the end of the first half. Elster quite happy just to notch up another three. <laughs> that, they're not going to. He's kicked beautifully all evening. Kicked three out of three conversions, and then that one was a disaster. No, he just kicked the ball up here, look. Oh, it's like a, a snap clock, isn't it? The Ospreys have taken it quickly. Williams driven back in the tackle. Semayali to Richie Pugh. Rod Moore in the tackle. Justin straight back behind Nandy Williams. Very good on that one. Cunningham judges it perfectly. And the fullback chases after his own kick downfield. Barry Williams controls very well over the shoulder. Beautifully presented by the hooker. Connor Gibbs. It's Peter who's outside. It was a great pass. It was a great pass by Gibbs in a very confined space. Had it been a flyer, well, who knows? But 
the Ospreys still have a chance. Sibayali, nice pass from him as well to Barry Williams. Newman to Millward. Good support work by the Ospreys. Story goes for the gap himself. Ward with a tackle. Andy Williams. Beta. There's Twetty on his outside. And in the end, outside, guys. they have to settle for a penalty. You can't get back. It's a quick ball. You Again, can't get initially, back. good approach work by the Ospreys. This is the ball. Again, as he set up the try, runs in, comfortable, number 13, just reads the play incorrectly. You know, he just comes in. When Scott Gibbs does play against you, you are, you know, tend to keep an eye on him, even if it's not your player. And he's played really well tonight. You know, he just put other people in the space. At least they've got to reorganise. I think that they're committing far too many players to the rucks and the malls. And when the ball's coming out, they've got too many numbers in defence, Ulster. So they've got to clear out with fewer people in the rucks and malls and give options behind. Connor has got the measure of those by now. His third successful penalty to go with his conversion of Dave Twetty's early try. And then once again, the Ospreys are back within striking distance. They're back within a try. So a couple of breakaway tries by Alistair. But the need swans the Ospreys have come on in there and they've worked their way back and taken the points when the opportunities arrive. I'm sure that Lynn Jones will be a good deal happier now than he was maybe 20 minutes ago. Yeah, just a few mistakes. Switching off in attacking positions and they've been really punished for it. Guys. But there's That's nothing in this game, there's then. a lot to play for in the second half, just oh, if Neath can keep Alistair out now, last couple of minutes. Frost on the line-out ball, Wallace. There's a run away, Black! Tackled by Richie Pugh, Doak. Well, on, on Just side. looking for Tackle support, which run. comes from the hooker, Matt Sexton. Ward. Tackle and run. back you go, please. Okay. Just to pass to Shane Stewart. Get on side. That's okay. Scott Young can come Go off his away. wing, Go looking away. for work. Ward again in there. James Bater keeping him at bay. Doak attacking the blind side. Back inside the best again in the movement. Paul James did well to track across and bring him down. Tyrone Howe caught in possession. But plenty of white shirts there. Stewart. There were too many out wide for a change this time, Ulster. That's where most of the traffic is. That's where most of the white shirts are in that quarter. Referee's arm out showing advantage and Neil Doak saying thanks very much. Won't bother with that because we're not going anywhere. You will have a shot at goal instead. Gotta go for goal. Last opportunity before half time. Really, there's nothing in this game. It's just that Ulster have taken their opportunities, and uh, you know they've seen the turnover ball. There's the plant by Stewart. Ball comes out. There's Doak. He knows it's a penalty. He sees, and that was the previous ruck, and uh, Luke Tate got in the way. The following ruck, he just really didn't understand. His kicking game falls apart at the end of the first half. Two dreadful penalty attempts. That's like having a, that's like having a shank in golf, there, isn't it? Oh, it was an awful strike, but it means that the Ospreys at half time are still well within striking distance. And despite the fact that Ulster have got three tries in the opening period, it's just a one try between them. Neath Swans, the Ospreys trailing only by 16 points to 21. Yep, everything to play for. You know, they've uh, tested each other out. I think the Neath and Swansea Ospreys just need a, 
keep the ball and you know concentrate when they're in the opposition 22 defensively apart from that there's nothing much uh, in between these two sides just the one try between them it's 16 to 21 in the visitors favor we can go down pitch side to Stuart Davis yeah thanks very much Gareth and joined by Sean Hawley assistant coach here with the Ospreys an enthralling half Sean a great start for you but it didn't quite go to plan after that no, uh, too many basic errors really, Stu. Uh, we started with a bang and we, we set out to do that. Um, but so many basic errors and uh, you can't afford to do that at this level. To your credit, it was a great start. You're also looking to be very positive. You're playing the ball out of the tackle, but it's cost you on occasions. It's about balance, I suppose, isn't it? It is. Uh, we've said that uh, from the start we want to play attractive rugby uh, for the people to watch and uh, to play a different brand. But um, And we've probably played the best rugby of the half, but unfortunately uh, sometimes that doesn't win your games. You're about to go in, into the dress room. I'm sure you can give instructions that can turn this round. I'm sure. Yeah, we've got to keep calm, though. You know, we are playing some good stuff, and I'm sure if we play for the last 20, we'll, uh, we'll win this game. Best of luck. Thanks, John. Come from Bath, Nathan Bonner. You can't expect them to time. gel. It does take yeah. a bit of time, especially if the scrum's going backwards like that. Scramble defence. Take the responsibility. Scramble defence takes a bit of time. Yeah. But yeah. they haven't got time. So what would you do in the second half to? Uh, I think one thing I would do is think about bringing Gavin Henson on at mm. uh, 10. I think that, you know, he, he, we saw last week against Romania, I mean, his goal kicking is exemplary, and I think he does add something to the team. So I would give Sean Connor sort of, you know, five, ten minutes, and then I, I'd get Henson on there. I can understand Lynn Jones probably he hasn't trained that much with the team, and 10, pivotal role, he won't know a lot of the moves, but I would take the gamble because I think for Lynn Jones, he needs that win. Yeah. Up front, they, um, there's not a lot they can do because, again, you can't expect the scrum just to come together and be cohesive. It takes, it takes games and the, the one thing they haven't got at this level is time to find their feet but you know they have to and, they, and I desperately we, we just need a win tonight. Really. Okay so actually they, they may need something I don't know a bit of luck H perhaps. Henson, Henson bring him on. Henson and a bit of luck okay back to Jonathan and Charlo. Yeah, just to pick up on one thing that John McCombish said there, just to remind you, he's talking about bonus points. It's four points for a win now, two points for either, or if you lose by seven points or less, a bit like a Super 12, Jonathan. So it should be a, a lot to play for, whatever happens, you know, right on until the end of the game. Yeah, first and foremost, you've got to get a result. And, um, yeah, I would give Connor ten minutes. Also, I'd give Durston ten minutes. And then I'd bring Gareth Morris on. You know, he adds a little bit extra from, um, you know, from the, the back there. But just a you know, you know, if you're in the pressure of scrum, get a channel one ball out the back, you know, you've got a, the ideal inside centre and Scott gives a goal the advantage then. Then you attack. But I also think that they are committing too many players to rucks and moors, and when they do recycle it, they've got more defenders than attackers, so it's always going to be difficult. And one other point as well, the attendance tonight is 4,250. So... Not a bad little one to start things off. I think, uh, of course, they would have liked a full house, but... On a Friday evening, first time out. Maybe a lot of people didn't know it is on. Well, they'll know next time. Yeah, I don't think the marketing has been that great, you know. So, um, and the World Cup players aren't playing. So, you know, it is a very difficult start for them. But the only thing they can do is win matches and then it's a total turn. Fine play by Sean Connor getting on the end of that kick. Andy Williams, Adrian Durston. Durston with a little chip for Sabay Ali, but it bounced away, unfortunately, instead of bouncing upwards or onwards. And Durston adjusting there. He saw the defence. Great work by Sean Connor and good support as well. And Nathan Bonner Evans. Barry Williams. Nice pass to Andy Williams. Williams picks up pace again. Try to get it into Sean Connor. But it's still on. It was great work on the floor, which gets the gap for Durston. And Adrian Durston gets over. But it was James Bater who got onto the loose ball on the floor. That's what kept continuity going. And the two Williams boys, Barry and Andy, set it off. Lovely link work by Bater on the floor. And Adrian Durston gets the Neath Swansea Ospreys off to a scoring start in the second half as well. Well, maybe, maybe give him 20 then. No, it's, a, it's just good support play. He runs on the inside angle, and that's a missed tackle, and he scores. You know, you can't do anything then more than that. Yeah, Dork gets a good hit on him. Just runs through the tackle, poor defence. You know, good play by Durston.
Sean Connor with an important kick. He's curled it round, and beneath Swansea Ospreys are back ahead for the first time since the opening stages of the game. Try converted, and they lead by 23 points to 21. Well, let's just not hope it's deja vu the first half. Let's kick on now, the Ospreys. Couldn't hold on to the restart. Nice pick up by Wallace on the half volley. And Constable was just shoved off it. Connor. Then there's well and Andy Williams. Tries to spot a gap back there. Good covering by Cunningham. Outside is 22. There's the biggest fullback in the world. <laughs> Andy Newman, six foot seven of him. Sydney looks a lot fitter this year than I have seen him, so he must have put a lot of work into the, the pre-season. Wallace just plays the angle again. Dave Tuetti will have to play that one, looks inside. There's nobody there, so he has to take it on himself. Andy Williams is trying to get it away to Adrian Durston. It's all a bit messy for the moment. And it's Elster who awarded the penalty. This will be an interesting decision whether he goes for goal because his previous kicks have been shockers, haven't they? So I think Andy Ward had made a decision for him. He said, you're not kicking for goal, son. Go for the touchline. Is that the confidence of Andy Ward in his forwards or the lack of confidence in his outside half's kicking? Just what I was going to ask there. <laughs> we'll we'll soon see now. That's him. Lats, come in. Thank you. Keep the line straight. There he is, the captain who made the decision. Frost has gone to the tail, and it's his ball. Advantage! Try to pop it down to one of the forwards coming through. Knocked on. Goes well away, so stay up. Please. By the Ospreys. Stay up. Hi, Ted. I still want you down early, please. As soon as your hooker goes down, you're in. I think it's uh, Bonner Evans that's having some treatment. Thank you, Nice. And that's Gavin Thomas who's stripping off, wearing 20 for the Ospreys. Back in Wales after a couple of seasons up with Bath. Pencoid product. Wants to play for Bridgend. No ball. Hold. Hold. Engage. Keep it up. Get it. Hold it steady. Rock solid scrum for Ulster to work from. Picked up by Wilson. Well there's a rock there, there's by a the rock. Osprey back row. Play by Pew. Sexton tries to set it up for Ulster. Yeah, too far the advantage line. Not going anywhere. Wallace meant for Constable. Loose ball flicked back by Tate. Thurston thought about launching an attack and launched the big boot downfield instead Cunningham using his 22 this time Beneath will be more than pleased Neath Swansea Ospreys more than pleased with their defensive qualities from that series of line scrum attacks by Elster Nathan Bonner Evans. So it may be a fairly short first visit for Gavin Thomas. I think there's a change on the Ulster back row. Yeah, it's the number eight, Roger Wilson, who's coming off. And Neil McMillan, wearing 19, comes on. With the line now take. Having Thomas in control of it. Barry Williams trying to hang on to him as he drives forward. Connor Gibbs. Andy Ward came across to marshal him. 
Connor to Eddie. Gavin Thomas. Again, a good builder from the Ospreys. Barry Williams. Maybe an overlap on the outside. Newman straight down the middle. On the far side, they're calling for some more support in defence. Story tries to make the break. Advantage to the Ospreys at the moment. Connor. Millward in support. He loses out, but it'll be a penalty. Ospreys anyway. And they have up the pace at the beginning of this second half of the Ospreys. And you're in the red zone. Gil Bevan, the fitness coach, and Lynn Jones just waiting to bring Nathan Bonner Evans back on. successful kicks from seven attempts for Sean Connor. And that's another one to add to the collection. And now it's Ulster to have to do the chasing. And again, you know, they've uh, had good attacking position. Both sides, they just seem to be making mistakes in the opposition 22 or relaxing the opposition 22. You know, giving field position away and then uh, giving penal penalties away. Nathan Bonner Evans back in action. And that time, Luke Tate makes absolutely certain of the restart. Williams hoists it downfield, coming in curls. Story dumps him, but the full back did well. But there's a spring in the step of the Ospreys in the second half. They look like they mean business. Doak to Wallace. No, no, no. And he was more than happy just to get shot of it. No, his kick was out in the fall. And that is really a sign of the pressure that the Ospreys are putting on Austin at the moment. Yeah, it's a great take. Uh, you know, is he in the air or not? It's a good hit. And uh, Paddy Wallace has just got a shocking last maybe 15 minutes hasn't he Barry Wallace his game has gone a bit a little bit and the cry of Ospreys Ospreys comes around the knoll and that's what they want to hear during the season of the second half not just safely negotiated by the Ospreys they've added 10 points in that 10 minute period still Wallace not finding his mark Durston oh, great step and again support comes from Sevai Ali and the Ospreys rampant at the moment Durston Again, looking to get that big sidestep in action. Again, centres, Andy, centre, same goal. And another offside goal against Ulster. And the tide at the moment is certainly going the Ospreys' 30. way. 30. That's all they've got to do is just turn this pressure into points. Well, just builds up speed, bang, lovely step. Leaves Tyrone Howe for dead. Looks for support. I think someone's had a word with him on the half time. Certainly he picked his game up. I think it was that 10 minute warning you gave him, Jonathan. He certainly picked it up after that. It's a big kick. John Connor cranes his neck, but that can't turn it round for him. And then you've got to kick those, that would have put them, you know. 
eight points in front, and that would have been uh, just relaxed on that, didn't he? Look at him. Didn't follow through, length back in it. And every kick is supposed to be the same. I can't think of somebody easier than others. And that's what Neil made Neil Jenkins a great kicker. You know, he went through the same routine every time. Andy Ward trying to get his team going from deep inside their own 22. And they have been hemmed back in their own half for most of this second period. Stewart. Oh. That was Scott Young, who was prolaxed. Let's go. Hi, James Story. Wait, please. And this will be interesting because if there's one week in James number. Story's game. It's a high tack. It, it does go high. It's got to be a tackle. Be careful, please. Not a tackle. It's going to be a good hit to the horses. Read it well. Just all he's got to do is hang on to it. Hang on to the player. Certainly didn't miss the lead. Great hit, though. It's a great hit. Watch. Read it well. He just hangs on there. That is a great tackle. Because he didn't use his hands, he's penalised. Now then, what do the centres make of this? A uh, member of the centres union, Mike Hall? Well, I, I think you can tell Jonathan Davies used to play rugby league because I thought that was 10 minutes in the bin there. That was, uh, that was high and that was dangerous. Well, you were a clean player, Ollie, weren't you? <laughs> Come on, you've got to admit there, it was a swinging arm, I almost took his head off. Hit the chest first, I think. He just hit the chest and then went up. And you've got to give it a put it about a little bit, haven't you? <laughs> Guys, we'll get out offside. Sorry, get him on side, that's all. There's a hit again. I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't know. I, he's all right. He's got. He's, fancy he's, being on the receiving end. Did you? No, but you. He knew. He was telegraphed anyway. You know the inside ball. Not running off the ball that time. Thanks to it. Scott found Scott Young. And Young has got another clout. Emerged, and it's just bubbling up at the moment. And the referee, he's all the help he can get from his officials. That's Nigel Owens. I think we have a little look now. Number six came in. no attempt to join on. Go away, please. Just a moment. There's no attempt to join them all. He just came in with a swinging arm with a punch. That's a yellow card. Okay, there's no attempt. My recommendation in the other car? Or he bollocking? Just came in. I couldn't see where he caught. He just came in. No attempt to bounce the swing. Did you say out. bollocking? A, Penalty? Just speaking to him and apparently okay. there. It's a good ball again. Skipper! Touch it on the far side for me. Coming in. No attempt to bounce the ball. Yeah. We're coming in swinging. Nothing other than the penalty, Andy. Thank you. It's just a warning for Andy Ward in the end. There he is. Have a look there, look. Yeah, I think there was a punch there. Great decision, you know, no yellow card there. I think the intent was there, but he didn't really carry it out in the end, did he? No, it wasn't. I think it was uh, meant for Durston, but Von Revelen's got in the way, perhaps. On the line, black it, black That's a bit of frustration, isn't it, as well, from the yeah. youngster captain? And early, please. Nice take by Andy Newman. Connor. Oops, it is. Juggled with it, but held on to it. That's okay. That's okay. And it's stolen ball. Now then, this could should be three on one, surely. Constable straightens up. Young Burton needs Swansea defence, but time to get back there. And that wasn't Close good use of turnover on, ball by Ulster. Doak to McCormack. Wallace, that's Mustion, one of the replacements. Stewart in the thick of things again. Wallace 
Dummies inside once, then gives it to Gary Longwell the second time. Young. Stewart. Center, who came in as a last minute replacement for Jonathan Bell, is getting in the thick of things. Neil Best, nice little offload. Andy Ward almost put in a gap by a scrum half, but he left the ball behind. And that's a relief for the Osprey defence. Yeah, from the turnover, there was an overlap on the right hand side. And this this is the short ball. There's the knock on which gives Neatus the putting at the scrum. This is a switch, and if any kids are watching, this is how to waste an, uh, an overlap. Come inside when you've got a three on two. That is not what you do when you've got an overlap. You stay out and straighten up and use the ball. If you come inside on a switch, you just don't make use of the number, the extra man. No, I know. Let's get the blood away from it. Make the change, please. Just, uh, no, no, the, not the, making the most of their opportunities, the as underlined there. Yeah, the Ospreys will happy with that with those with that start. Okay. And for the second time, for what looks like the final time, Andrew Millward departs and Adam Jones comes on. He had about a quarter of an hour the first time out. He'll have just over 20 minutes a second as the rain starts belting down. Engage. Hold the push. Okay, here he comes. Here he comes. Okay. So the conditions getting more and more difficult for the players and it has become a bit scrappy in these latter stages one of Evans did well there but you just watch the Elster back row they get there quicker they outnumber the Neath players what is he picks the ball up here first of all it's a good tackle and then look it's good drive there by two of the Elster players against one just Scott Gibbs and Bona hangs on. Now then, has he got his head back on and his kicking boots back on? Yep, that'll do. So that reduces the deficit. Just two points. That's Elster's first point of the second half coming just about on the hour mark. All to play for. And I think summer's over now, look. <laughs> I think it is. If we didn't know it already, with rugby back in full flow, that just confirms it. I'm not sure what the conditions are up in Scotland, but the Celtic Warriors are certainly enjoying them. Half time from Netherdale. The borders nil, the Celtic Warriors 31. Two tries for Sean James, four penalties for Neil Jenkins. Not such good news from Glasgow. They, the, the Cardiff Blues trail 11 points to six. There we are, that is a penalty. Suddenly took the legs of Best when he was in the air. And what so we don't want to do now is give penalties away. You know, needs this area of the of the field because he's just gonna get good field position. Now I'm getting the pressure once again. There's only two points in it. And the Warriors emails will be happy if you want to get in touch with the Scrum 5 website this weekend. <laughs> Plenty to talk about. My Cuddy in conference with Lynn Jones. Look at Paul Shields. Another replacement, Matt Muschin, who couldn't keep hold of it. Barry Williams just makes it back. Reaches forward, something to drive on to. Connor tries the high one. Into the wet ball, well taken by Bryn Cunningham. Story looked to be offside again. Back inside to McMillan. Best 
Jay Storey's got that habit of going in with his shoulder rather than going in with, his, with the arm with it for the tackle, which has cost him in the past. Yeah, so the over times on the last couple of seasons, but you know he's got to come to fruition now and show that he is a you know a quality player. Another little flip to the loop around by Shields. But it's taken by Richie Pugh for the Zonzi Ospreys. Williams says that Matt Muschin was well in front of, rather than behind the back feet. And Greg Davis, the referee, agrees. How on earth am I supposed to get the ball away when he's standing there, ref? First of all, it's a great tackle. And watch Pugh here. Whoop, straight away in he goes. He's come from an offside position there. Deliberately knocked on. And it is really teeming down at the moment. There's the Ospreys. I feel at home in the wet. <laughs> Double change, Gavin Thomas back on, and the other Gavin, that's Henson, wearing 17, replacing Sean Connor. Good attack, attacking opportunity for Gavin Henson. That's what he likes. 15 minutes left. The match is there to be won. We've seen him do it before. Andy Williams, and Henson. He's a little dark. First time out. Story to Etty. did well from standing start. Barry Williams slips it back to Luke Tate. Good cleared ball for Andy Williams. Henson, a lot of traffic running around him. Savayali outside his man. Savayali keeps it alive before he's bundled out in the corner. So it's still on for the Ospreys. Up to the try line they go, and that is a try. Well, that could be a vital try. Garin, Holyfield. <laughs> it's very difficult to see who scores here, isn't it? Savali so did well. Savali so did extremely well. It's inside ball. And I, Gavin Henson, look. I think he's still got the ball, isn't he? Hang on, let's keep it there. It's Gavin it Henson, I think. It's Gavin Henson who has got over with some help from Adam Jones, but there clearly. Try. On the try line, Gavin Henson gets the try. I don't see many out of half scoring from rolling balls, do you? <laughs> Fails with the conversion, but it doesn't matter. His impact has been immediate. Well, he's got that special thing, isn't he, of making an impact. Has to ring the changes, and as they fall, a converted try behind. And they've got 14 minutes to try and get back on terms. Tries to turn him, but the penalty has gone the other way. 
Three. You've got no, you've got to get away. Back you go. Wrong down uh, run down uh, a blind alley there, took the wrong option, but uh, I think it was Bone and Evans who didn't roll away on the floor. There's still a lot of play for you, you know, it's uh, one try. Defensively, they've improved in the second half. Straight lines, please! He swans your spray, so um, concentration again. Ward with a take of the tail, McCormack with the drive in on him. That's the neat Os Swansea Osprey 22 in the background. And Elster inch their way into it. <laughs> Shrill blast. Offside! Line out, what's over? Because the midfielder offside. Line out hadn't been completed, says the referee. This will be an interesting decision. Will he go for goal or? Yeah. Scott Gabe was just wanting an explanation. You'll be told that the drive is moving from the second the line out ball was taken and the line out hadn't been completed. And they'd infringed in midfield. Paddy Wallace moves in with double figures and as things stand at the moment moves Ulster into a bonus point position if they lose. possession Gavin Thomas by the spot a runner but missed everybody Gibbs with a flick and that was too quick as well story recovers to Bonner Evans Bonner Evans finds a gap Adam Larkin there 16 on for Iron Constable drags him down Gavin Thomas with a pick up again Williams to Henson story back inside is Millward is back on the field the pass is forward that's forward Guys, I don't think that's it. It's lovely too, but... It's a lovely ball. Good running by Millward. It's, it's got to be lateral, though. I just... Yeah, from where we were, I thought that was a forward pass as well. <laughs> yep, forward pass. Millward, just a little bit too fast. <laughs> Bursting down the middle. Well, he's been off for a couple of times with injuries, but he's uh, determined to come back on. Fair play to him. And still full of running. And those two will be thinking, right, field position, 10 minutes. You know, another, another score will win it for us. Scott Gibbs, maybe the one, maybe backing out the commands, he's covering the blind side. It goes open to Wallace. Eston knocked it backwards. And the ball just skids off the outside of his boot. And the ward. Eston faces up to him though and gets a call from Richie Pugh. Who gets in another tackle that time in scrum half? Neil Goat. And great foraging from Richie Poo. Ooh. And fullbacks to Adrian Durston as well. Didn't shirk the task of bringing down the opposition captain Andy Ward. Uh, he's chased the kick very well, put the tackle in. Tangled, a swarm over him, doesn't release the ball, an opportunity for Gavin Henson. Oh, the crowd thought he scuffed it 
completely, but it drew it back left to right, and that's good enough for three more points for Gavin Henson, and three more points for the Ospreys. Came off to Etty's shoulder. You're very That's lucky there. <laughs> Anything could have happened with that one. Let the Ospreys ride their luck. But Henson under pressure with that kick. As things stand, Ulster still have a bonus point. Seven points or less. Badly wrong that time. I have to say that uh, the, away, the standard of yeah. throwing in tonight hasn't been great, has it? Very poor. Both sides. You're feeding. You're feeding. That's the second time Andy Williams has been called for the crooked feed. He's That's Mischin. Get out the way. Trying to get us to going. Ward lost it in the tackle. Nice pick up by Williams. Gives the flick. Look as it might be a bit too clever. But uh, it reached Sevayali. He couldn't produce one of the same quality. Yeah, the, the, the Osprey supporters didn't think that they had the, enough of an advantage there. There's a quick flick. That wasn't forward. This one's, the next one certainly was. Well, third time it is for keeps. <laughs> and there goes Andrew Millward, and here comes Adam Jones. will be well aware at the moment they've got four points in the bank but a converted try from Ulster well then there'll be a share of two points each There's plenty to play for for both teams Ulster a little bit over eager but McMillan recovers well Andy Ward he's a very very good player 28 times by Ireland Hands coming through as the Ospreys try to get back on it. Oh, here's a big call now for Andy Ward. Five minutes left. He's going to go for goal, isn't he? You know, the crowd showing their displeasure. But the game is there to be won. Three more points for Paddy Wallace, and that gives us a tight finish. Less than five minutes left for play. The Ospreys 34, Ulster 30. Gibbs didn't need a second invitation. Henson, the angled cross kick, but no real pressure on Scott Young. Just giving possession away at that stage. Two kicks going astray. In these latter stages, Shields will attack along to Etty. Andy Williams, Durston, Durston through the gap, off, oh, meant for Gibbs, 
never materialised, hacked through though by the Osprey skipper, so they're still in possession. Have numbers left, they've come right. Henson goes for the gap himself, a double tackle on him. Yes, the defence is too good to buy that one. Barry Williams held on to it. Andy Williams, Gibbs called for the kick. Asking a lot of Sabayali to get under it. Young was back there. Offside, guys. But there's an offside anyway. Well, this rock. could be a chance for the Ospreys. Just about make it safe. Three. I just think, you know, they need to keep it tight, the Ospreys. They don't have to chase the game. They need field position. There's another kick. You know, let's have confidence to keep it in the hand there. Numbers out wide. The kick is there. And Scott Young... You know, had no option but to kick it, but uh, they had a penalty, but just keep it in the hand. And this is a big kick. He kicks this, it's at least a draw. Less than two minutes remaining. I mean, Henson has pushed it wide, though. So it still remains a nervy last 90 seconds plus. For oh, the newly formed Ospreys. Well, they'll have to work on their goal kicking, won't they? You know, it's, uh, they've got to knock those goals over. Stay behind, please. And Lynn Jones just wants to see them lock it out from here. Gavin Thomas, good run by the replacement flanker. Excellent work by him. Great ball for the Ospreys to use. Barry Williams appears at outside half. Runs into the Ulster midfield. Luke Tate takes it on. Up towards the 22. Here comes Henson. Henson waits and puts Tuetti in the hole. Tuetti for the corner. Not quite. The defence just got across in time. But still, the pressure is on the Ulster try line. Williams has to dig. Henson pops up at scrum half that time Durston, huge pass out to the midfield to Andy Newman but the referee was playing an advantage anyway and this even side, if the Ospreys can't get the try he was never they surely on. must never have done enough to win the game well, I would now go the for the touchline because if they get four tries they get a bonus point do they? absolutely spot on so why not Good you know, just that man. put it into the touch just keep them here, kill the clock Don't worry about the numbers. Lovely pass by Henson to Tuetti. And it was Dave Tuetti who started it in the opening minute. Couldn't finish it off then. And look who's there. Lin uh, Pew was there once again. Richard Pew was there to keep it going. Win the penalty. And he's in the thick of things again, is Richie Pew. Trying to be driven on by his team. So is Gavin Thomas. The Ospreys trying to drive the way over. Bonner Evans tries to slip it back. Right up in the corner, Andy Williams to Henson. Dummies tries to bang his way over, just held up. Not it's there back again back for the Ospreys to Not use. Gone. Andy Williams, Dead. he can't make it. Adam Jones, he's fought, fought down short as well. Paul James tries to step over everybody, has to lay it back. Williams, the short pass again, gives to Henson. Henson has another crack at it. And Gavin Henson gets his second try. And a try that gets the Ospreys off to a dream start. It's not just a win, it's a bonus point as well. I think, you know, he is, he is a match winner, isn't he? I just wish, you know, he could play like this, you know, for the whole match, not just when he comes on. Because, you know, he's an awesome physique. Look at the size of him there. There's no way that anyone is going to stop him. we just got to get his, you know, mind focused. And this guy's got the potential to be a world-class rugby player. You know, it's just a shame someone's got to work with him. And he's won the game on the bonus point.
touchline conversion. And Gavin Henson makes the most of the limited opportunity he's had in this game. 15 points now for him, makes it safe and denies Elster what would have been a losing bonus point. He's had an impact at the end, but Jonathan, you're the one deciding the man of the match for the whole of the 82 minutes played and your decision. I think it's been very difficult picking uh, one player. I, don't, I think it's been a, a good team effort by Nice. A bit rusty, um, but second half performance has been exceptional. Ulster, I think Andy Ward has uh, stood out. We've got to mention Gavin Henson. Since he's come on, he's, he's actually turned the match and maybe won it for them. But for the, the duration of the match, I've got to give it to Richie Pugh. You know, he's done a lot of work on the ball. I just think he deserves the man of the match tonight. Richie Pugh, the open side flanker for the Neath Swansea Ospreys, very highly thought of by Swansea as a youngster who came through the under 21s. There he is, and he makes his mark as he leaves Swansea and joins the Ospreys this season by winning the Man of the Match award in the first game. No, no, no. Grabs and hold. Engage. Hold the board, get in straight. Stay back. Alistair will be gutted. If they come away empty-handed after working so hard and leading for such a long time in this one. Andy Ward. That's okay, play it, go! Stay. That's Ladder Larkin. I think it's an off-the-ball tackle there by... Uh, Really on door. He's still down in the far corner. I just saw him on his knees and he was dope. So everybody has to fill in at the scrum half for the moment. Tyrone Howe that time. Loose, slippery ball, which Gavin Thomas tries his best to get to. And the scramble on the floor that time ends in a penalty for Ulster. Wrong decision. Wrong decision. Here we go. He's gonna go to the he's gonna go over the touchline, I think. Watch. Servili, late bang. Have a bit of that. You've got to keep your elbow up. If you're off, if you're offloading a tackle, you've got to keep your ball up. You've got to keep your elbow up. Just to look after yourself. Bit of insurance. So if he tries, if he tries to take you out, you just leave your elbow then. Cop that. Well, he's got a dozen odd caps for Samoa. He's from Wellington. So uh, a New Zealand Samoan, and that was the, the tackle to show it. That's Shane Stewart, who's done well, got an early try for Ulster, but he's taking a bang on that left knee. And it's Seamus Mallon who's come on of Dungannon. To replace Shane Stewart. There he is, six foot three of him. He's only a 22 year old. If they come within seven points and four tries, they have two bonus points. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't see why not. I don't see why not at all. They could have two points. They got about a minute and a half left to try and get two points. That's it's a big call for us, though. Did they get two points? I don't you know. Know. <laughs> you don't yes, know. they do. Yes, they will have two Come points. Start Got to. Four tries and within within seven, yeah. Two points in the offing for us. They're still. I'm on the ball tonight, my first game. Hey. Sharp. You're so sharp, so when you don't cut yourself. 22. New season, and you're obviously rejuvenated, uh, Jonathan. This is when the revision should start in September. <laughs> Forget <laughs> August, just September. On the five, move black, move black, move black, move. Wait till he's That's down. Mustin okay. with the take, McCormack. It's there for us to Doak. Just two meters short. Has he kept it in field? Not nah, just being forced out. So, 
time is almost up. Nathan Bonner Evans just brings it away. Kevin Henson in his own in-goal area. Henson. It's kept in field though by Cunningham. They have to try something. Cunningham on the loop. Savali waiting with intent. And he did the Robin job that he meant to do. And that is the final action of the first game of the new season. And the neat Swansea Ospreys have got off to a winning start. And not just a winning one. With four tries, they get a bonus point as well. And Jonathan, that's a job well done. Yeah, I think tonight was all about winning. Um, increasing the level of performance as the season goes ahead. But it's all about winning and hopefully getting some uh, supporters for the next home game. Three tries for Oster in the first half, but the Ospreys win. Four tries to three, 41 points to 30. Straight down pitch side to Stewart with the winning captain, Scott Gibbs. Yeah, thanks very much, Gareth. Fresh from the battle. Congratulations, Skips. Job done. Well, we needed that one. I mean, we've had two swings of bat out in the summer, but, um, you know, disappointed first half. You know, conceding three tries, but nevertheless, resilient. I tell you what, they play. They felt half time, they'd only had three chances, they finished them well. They were dangerous on the break. You seem to tighten things up a little bit second half. Well, I think uh, we needed to go through the middle again and just consolidate a game. We did to some extent, but I just think, you know, from start to finish, we were the team that were playing rugby. Yeah. We made mistakes. We slipped our own throats. That could have been 40 points to nil up there tonight. But nevertheless, happy with him. Back of the knoll. Great support. Dragons next week. It's been a great occasion, Scott. You, you've you been at the head of galvanising the squad. And how, you know, how good did it feel out there? It does feel different. I mean, uh, you know, everything about this summer, the spring training, has been completely different. It's been very uh, upbeat. The guys have worked hard. Um, you know, and, and I think everyone's trying to buy into this region, but be certainly in this area. So, great support tonight. Well, that'll do with the power of good. Well done, Scott. Cheers, sir. If Neath leaked three tries in the first half, they started with a bang in the second. This is the first of Ulster's three tries against Neath's, uh, sorry, the Ospreys won. <laughs> Ulster building up a first half lead. The Ospreys came back into it. Here's the big run in from Ulster skipper Andy Ward. And it seemed for a time that the Ospreys would be up against it. But then Adrian Durston got their second half underway with a real touch of class. Then a touch of might from the forwards. Included in the middle there, Gavin Henson. And Henson crammed his contribution with a second try neath uh, the Ospreys rather leaked three tries scored three of their own in the second half and have won yeah if you look at the stats well territory possession nothing to choose between them uh, the Ospreys you know didn't get into 22 as much as the opposition but I think in the second half they took their chances and there was very little to choose between these sides was there I think Ulster sort of got they sort of uh, got very ragged in the second half under the pressure of the Ospreys you can see that through the handling errors they sort of it's sent in a way, and it was pretty even at half time. And similarly, the penalties crept up for Ulster as well. I think that shows the pressure that the Ospreys put them under, especially in the first period of that uh, second half, and they were magnificent. Just before you leave the commentary box, Jonathan, um, the contribution of Gavin Henson. I know you gave the Man of the Match award to, uh, to Richie Pugh, who was outstanding, but Gavin Henson came on, and he certainly turned the tide. Yeah, he always seems to do that, doesn't he? You know, he seems a, a far better player when he comes on with something to play for he usually turns the match um, you know with his forceful running or his or his goal kicks or drop goals but I just think you know he's got to be focused for 80 minutes you know if he wants to break into that Welsh Welsh side here we go you know he just drives the ball in there as the ball comes out you know he's the one who, who set the ruck up he's there once again realizes up, there's too many players in there he comes out takes the pass off Gibbs and it's just a one-on-one -on -one. He, he's too big and too strong Look, the ball comes out. Oop, thank you very much. He's always going to score. So he's got to get in. Someone like Lynn Jones has got to award him because he has fantastic potential. But he's been around for a couple of years now. I think he's got to make his mark this year. And, uh, you know, with that much potential and talent, he should be going to the World Cup. But he isn't. So, um, But as Gibbsy said, tonight's all about winning. And the first half, they let three tries in. Second half, they close shop. It's a great start for the Ospreys. Thank you, Jonathan. Now, uh, the man who has to mould Gavin Henson into the complete footballer is Lynn Jones. He's with Stewart. Yeah, thank you very much, Ed. I'm also joined 
by Richie Peel. The Ospreys' first game, the Ospreys' first man of the match. Tremendous game, Richie. Congratulations. Yes. You're part of a very strong back row pool that the, the coach has selected here, but you've made your mark early. You must be very pleased. Yeah, well, uh, it's great competition down at the Ospreys, so uh, I'm just happy to get a chance. And, uh, well, team effort up there today, I uh, thought we did very well, so thank you. Yeah. I think the coach will take it. Uh, young lad did the job for you, then. Too small to play open side, Stuart. It's clear that the guy's under six foot. There's no future for him. Yeah, I seem to remember someone else being accused of that. But uh, mostly pleased, Lynn, I should imagine. Job done. Oh, yeah, very, I'm delighted, uh, Stuart. Uh, you know, Ulster didn't pose any threats. We gifted him 21 points. I wasn't really duly really concerned at half time, though. We were down by a number of points. Uh, we came back, we were more direct second half, and we took our opportunities uh, like we didn't in the first. Uh, you know, very pleased. Uh, it's, a, it's a winning start, it's a positive, and a, a well-deserved victory. Yeah, it'll do well, shall we? You know, the power of good, I'm sure. It's, it's been a big build-up. What have you made of the whole occasion? Uh, it's, I've been very, very nervous all, all day, and like the rest of the squad and the coaching team, we're very apprehensive about, uh, about tonight. But we, we're glad it's, it's underway now, and uh, we've got standards to hit, and there's a lot to improve on there, but uh, generally it's a good start. Lots of, uh, lots of good players there, and uh, you know, we're going in the right direction. So, and that's, that's just with, uh, you know, that's not gauging results, that's gauging performances, individual performances as well. Yeah. Well done, guys. Congratulations both.